Did you know that private flight accidents are more than half of all ever recorded? Here's a fun one. Did you know that airshow related accidents are five times more of that during combat? Today, we're diving into the data and exploring some fun insights into the aviation industry. Small note, this video will focus on accidents, not crashes, which is an event during the operation of the aircraft that causes death, injury, or major damage to the hull. With that, let's start with the basics. In 2025, an average of over 17 accidents were reported on NTSB and ASN each day. A huge number, and one that fluctuated and strangely peaked in 2022, and stayed around the 7,000 mark until 2025. While there are some great datasets and reports available for analyzing metrics like these, they don't offer the specific data I needed for my analysis. So, I had to collect it myself directly from the source, and I found the catalog that the NTSB provides, but they only had what they call Carol Query, which basically is a case analysis and reporting online tool that you can use in the browser. So I had to build an API proxy for it. I pulled this data at the start of November 2025, so all insights are based on that time frame. Once I had the full catalog, I quickly realized that I needed more, because the NTSB mainly provides data for accidents and incidents under the US jurisdiction, which are the accidents involving US registered aircrafts that's everywhere around the world, and accidents involving US manufactured components, and that's only when a foreign country requests US assistance. That's why I reached out for the FSF for requesting their dataset and they kindly provided it, so thank you FSF. The dataset included details like aircraft registration, engine type, manufacturer, location, a lot more. It took me around 12 hours to gather everything from 2010 to 2025. The two data sources were pretty messy and inconsistent, so I went through a systematic cleanup process. After sorting everything out, I ended with more than 120,000 accidents. I organized everything into a database to make exploring and analyzing it much more efficient. And with that, let's dive into some interesting insights, starting with something light and fun. Here are the most causes for accidents. It's interesting to see how failures to maintain directional control during landing and total loss of engine power accounts for most accidents, and how bird strikes happen often, but don't always cause damage or force an emergency landing. Then comes the partial loss of engine power, and the failure to maintain directional control during takeoff. Not sure how will that happen. And there are some unexpected ones like, like the airplane's collision with a deer on the runway during landing. Next, let's dive into the data on the countries with the most accidents. First is the USA, second is UK, and strangely, third is Australia. I know this wouldn't be fair because how many flights are happening in these two countries, and because China doesn't share the reports too. Next is accident count per manufacturer. Sorted by the number of cases, this ranking highlights the most crashed airplanes and also, ironically, the biggest aircraft manufacturers, of course. It's worth noting that around 48% of planes currently flying are manufactured by American companies, primarily Boeing and Cessna. Same logic applies for models, too. The top 9 are Cessna models, followed by Boeing 737 and Airbus A320 family. I wanted to normalize these values to find the most accident-prone model per 1,000 produced, so I ended up with this beautiful graph that follows the power law. Veritasium made a very good video on this law, you should check it out if you're curious. The more an aircraft is close to the y-axis, it becomes the safest, and more it's far from the x-axis, it becomes most produced. So this is now 172, although it produced well over 400,000 units, it is safer than the 737, and a lot safer than planes on the other end of the spectrum like the Heavyland Comet and the Conveyor 880. I was curious to find out whether all the new safety rules and tech that we keep adding up every year have genuinely made flying safer. The result, not really. Then I looked for accidents per day and landed on this absolute gem. Accidents always peak in the middle of the year, around June and July, and then they dip at the end of the year. Another thing I noticed is that peak. On 24th of February 2022, the exact date, Putin announced the Russian invasion of Ukraine. I dug deeper and got the aircrafts that obviously crashed that day, and there they are. Mix, Sukhois, and a bunch of military transport Anatov aircrafts, and two RV-8s. Now that we've broken down accidents by country, manufacturer, and model, and even the highest crash days of the year, there are two more angles that help complete the picture. Flight phase and flight nature. So let's start with the flight phase. Every accident has a moment where things go wrong. Landing shows up a lot, and it makes sense you're close to the ground and the aircraft is slow. On-route accidents are a bit fewer, 
because once an aircraft is stabilized at cruise, it's one of the safest places it can be. Then there's takeoff, approach, and initial climb phases, where the aircraft is working hard, engine are at high power, and pilots don't have the altitude or time to react. You also got the niche stuff, maneuvering flights like air shows or firefighting, which naturally carry more risk, and standing, taxi, even pushback accents, not dramatic, but they still count. And of course, unknown, you know? Next is flight nature, basically what the aircraft was doing at that time. Private flights make up a big chunk because there's a lot of them and not all operate under the same strict procedures as commercial airlines. Passengers schedule flights, the commercial flights all of us take, show up far less than people think when you compare their accident rate to their massive volume. Cargo, military, test flights, airshow demos, agricultural flights, ferry flights, each has its own pattern. Some operate in demanding environments, some involve high-risk tasks, and some fly under very different regulations entirely. And yes, illegal flights are a category, and the data behaves exactly how you expect. Now for the final comparison everyone was waiting for, Boeing versus Airbus. Two line charts and the two largest manufacturers. Same timeline, and Airbus takes the win. Even if Boeing makes 2,000 units more, it still doesn't cover that gap. And that's it. If you have suggestions for another analysis, or if you spot any errors, feel free to reach out on Instagram or on the DMs. I'll be updating the description or maybe the pinned comment with any corrections based on your feedback. It was really fun to dive into this data and I hope you find it interesting. Building AI stuff? This month is your cheat code. Novita AI is running Build Month, November 24 to December 31 and they just dropped 20% off all open source LLM APIs and 20% off 4090, 5090 GPU instances. If you ever wanted to train, fine tune or scale your AI project, this is the time. Go build.